try to do today, even though I will be switching around views a little bit, uh, is try not to do it too quickly. So if you think I've sort of fallen asleep, um, that's probably because I'm going around in circles a little. Excuse me while I drink my morning coffee. Ah, okay, so I didn't want to do another hour. I found the last one um, quite long, uh, particularly as the number of attendees was too small to have a discussion or debate, so it just ended up being a, a bit of a lecture, and um, I don't want this to turn into a lecture, so what this one will be is simply a little bit of a demo. If you've looked at any of the material before, or if you've watched the previous recording, you'll know that I've tried to base my uh, look at serious mobile games around one particular example, and it's one that we've been developing at Massey University for well, uh, over two years now, in fact, with a series of sort of mini projects. And uh, if it was still the first version of the game, I certainly wouldn't be using it for this, because that was a game that only worked in one place and really was of no use to anybody else. But what we've been trying to do, and I think been reasonably successful in over the last couple of years, is gradually moving uh, the game into much more of a reusable framework. And what I wanted to do was, first of all, explain how the current game can be very easily reused by anybody. And uh, once we've done that, look at how we might progress things a little further. Because if there's something I, I hoped to get out of the, the MOOC, was, um, first of all, somebody perhaps drawing the game out as it is, uh, but also getting some ideas for how we can make it better in the future. So, um, with that in mind, what I'd like to do is um, go to the MOOC page and I'll explain um, how you can set up the game yourself using the materials that have been provided. I did touch on this a bit in the last talk, but I'm, today I'm going to specifically work through what you were to do if you wanted to try this game out, and then I'm hoping that uh, some of you might do that. Just need to pick the right page. Now, uh, as I said, I need to be a bit of a, aware of the fact that there seems to be a bit of a lag, so I'm trying not to race through things. So I'm just going to pause, find the right part of the page, just pause for a moment and, and leave it there and not try to move on too quickly. So what I've got in front of me, and uh, possibly you have as well, uh, is the page from the um, MOOC wiki, uh, about halfway down the, the games page where it says the mobile business consulting game. Oh, no, I didn't share my desktop. Oh, no, see, I, I thought I'd learned, but clearly I didn't now. Okay, so I want to share my desktop. Screen sharing. Okay, so I forgot that um, I have to do a separate thing to do screen sharing. It will start in a moment. Okay, I'm going to share my desktop now. Right, apparently it's being shared, so um, with that in mind, I'll take that out of the way and go to where I was before, which is here. So I hope you can see that, uh, my view, which is the mobile business consulting game part of the wiki. And I'll just... Um, walk through the resources. The original uh, game that we did was using Java Micro Edition and I did put that up on Source 4. It's really more as a sort of a legacy thing. Um, I'm aware that really Java Micro Edition is yesterday's technology um, and so it's really up there for, for interest and in fact we do get quite a few people downloading it but um, you know it's, it's got a limited platform. It runs on sort of Nokia S60s and that's about it. Um, so really the important thing is what we're working with at the moment, which is the Android version. Uh, and I haven't put that up on SourceForge yet. Um, I'm a bit reluctant to put the source code up uh, until I'm happy that you know it's, it's actually a usable open source project. And there's still a few um, things that I think need ironing out before it, it really goes up on SourceForge. But it will do. Um, and certainly I will just put the download file up on SourceForge 
uh, very soon, even if I don't put up the source code. So um, in terms of the file itself, there's a zip file here, the mobile game download, and if you download that, it basically consists of um, two things. One is the APK file, which is the installable application, and the other is the um, data that's inside it. And I'll come back to that, because the data that's inside it is the configurable data that you can change yourself. Now, um, if you want to install on Android devices, we haven't put it up on the store or anything, so uh, what we suggest is simply using a USB cable, and we've been using an application called Easy Installer, uh, which um, you can download from the store onto your Android phone. And it seems to be fairly easy to use, it's free. So we've um, you know, tried this out on a number of Android phones without any major problems. So all you really do is you copy the folder. Now the folder contains these things. Again, I don't know whether um, you can see that yet or whether there's going to be a bit of a lag. So any, what's in front of me uh, is the uh, mobile sim folder. And what you see inside the mobile sim folder is the tab game .apk. Oh, That's a bit of a stupid name, isn't it? We haven't really got a sensible name for the file yet. Uh, so that's the actual installable program. But the way that the program becomes um, a generic game framework that you can reuse for yourself is by reading in external files and we're hoping to do more and more of this as we develop the game so that uh, ultimately the, the game itself is actually just a kind of framework it doesn't have any assumptions in it at all except those structural assumptions about games that I talked about in the first uh, seminar and you may recall that there was this idea of the narrative uh, working through the the teaser and the elaboration and the conflict and the resolution and the game tree and it's those things that are core to the architecture of the game and then around that you can configure it uh, in different ways and the, the the simplest configuration which I'll focus on mainly is how can I play the existing game in my location which is perhaps the obvious question and then the second part of it, uh, which is a bit more complex but can be done, is how can I tailor the game to whatever I want? And actually that's not that difficult. So those are the things that we're going to be looking at. Um, okay, I'll, so we'll come back to what some of these files are a little bit later on. Let's go back to the um, wiki. So if you've installed uh, this thing, then um, it's it's not really very usable because if you install it as it is, if you just download the zip, put it on your phone, it's not going to work because you're not at Massey University, which is where the default configuration is. So, uh, if you uh, have a look at this user guide, um, you can find out how to configure it for yourself. So what I'm going to do is um, look at the user guide and then show you how it works. So again, I'm not sure how quickly this will appear on your screen, but I've just switched to the um, user guide, which you can download from the wiki. I'm looking at the original Word version. It's the same document. Make it a little bit bigger. OK. Um, so there's the link at the top for Easy Installer. Of course, if you're doing this on a mobile phone, then you don't need a URL for it. This is really just so you can go and look at it in advance. You can just um, browse the, the store and download it. And as I've just shown you, uh, the folder that you have inside there, the folder is called um, Mobile Sim. And that's the folder that you copy to your phone. So just copy um, that directly to the phone. And then inside the folder is the game and all of the configuration files. So what do you need to do to make this work in your own situation? Well, the most important thing is that you need to decide where you want to play the game. And once you've decided where you want to play the game, you need to pick specific points and record their latitudes and longitudes. And I'll talk about that in a moment. And once you know the latitudes and the longitudes that you want for each location, you modify these two files, interviews1.xml and interviews2.xml. Now, the modifications basically consist of replacing the existing latitude and longitude values with the ones that you want. So uh, the example I've got here is um, Google Maps. 
uh, in London. Let me do a slightly different version of that and show you what we've done at Massey. So um, let me go to Google Maps. Again, I'm not sure uh, how quickly you'll see the, the screen change, but what I'm going to do is basically zoom into um, the Massey University campus in Auckland. It's actually up here on the North Shore, which is this is Auckland City down here. Uh, we're up in Albany, so we're just actually in, in this is called North Shore City. It's uh, used to be a separate kind of area of Auckland. Now we have Super City. We're all part of Auckland. Okay, I'm basically just going to zoom into the campus. hopefully slowly enough so that um, it's not completely out of sync. Okay, I'm going to switch to satellite. This is the Massey campus. Um, slightly old picture. This particular part of the campus has been uh, gr grown from scratch really in the last 10 years or so and um, maybe a bit longer than that, but there's new buildings going up all the time, so um, this is a slightly old picture. It's, this part of the campus is quite small. Anyway, that's by the by. Um, it's a great location for playing the game, because the idea of the game, as you may have gathered from uh, previous presentations or documents, is that it's a sort of augmented reality game where you take the location that you've got and you pretend that it's a location that you want to simulate. So in our case, the various buildings of the campus uh, simulate different parts of an organization. And the idea, of course, is that in order to play the game, the players have to move from location to location. And as they pass through the campus, they reach different buildings. They have virtual interviews with employees of a company. They learn about problems of the company. They look at virtual artifacts, and when they finish, they have to uh, try and address some of the problems the company's facing. And in doing that, they have to apply higher level skills, uh, synthesis, analysis, critical thinking, to identify all the issues that are going on and try and suggest some solutions to that. So let's say you wanted to play this game uh, in your location. Let's say you were, you were here in Massey. So what we basically do is just decide where we want the locations. Now if you remember the game tree, the game tree's got um, uh, one, two, three, four, five, well kind of six locations that you need. So let's say I wanted to start here and I wanted the study center to stand in for the, um, the CEO's office. Just right click, what's here, and this gives me the uh, latitude and the longitude, actually that's, yeah, latitude and longitude. Um, and you can just copy that and paste it into your XML files. Actually, I've got a what I hope will be a sort of handy um, layout that, that may help you to do this. So that, that all you need to do is, is choose your locations. So the second location I might want here. So the second location is the um, uh, it's quality assurance. So I might choose this building where, in fact, my office is, and I might say what's here um, and get a different value, and then I can record that and so on. So I can easily use Google Maps to, to choose my latitude and longitude, so that I, and then I can write it down. Um, so really, what you might want to do is to, um, and I've put the information on this page about using the latitude and longitude. And then I've, I've made a suggestion uh, about you know how you might lay out the game. So the idea is that you, you need this kind of shape. This matches the game tree that appears in the document that explains the idea of the game. So the game tree is, is um, we have the first location, which is where the first interview occurs. And uh, you can see I've, I've placed this example in uh, Trafalgar Square. So you need the locations to be far enough apart so that they don't overlap in terms of GPS location. So you don't want them too close together. On the other hand, you don't want them too far apart because you know the purpose of the game is not to spend an awful lot of time walking. Uh, purpose of the game is to spend enough time between locations to give you time to 
you know, kind of reflect and feel that you are moving through a virtual environment. And of course, what you ideally want to do is pick locations that um, stand in for the buildings in the organization. But if you don't have buildings handy, then any location, of course, will do. You do have to have somewhere to put the physical artifacts. As I said up here on the document, um, I wouldn't suggest you try doing it in a place like Falga Square. Uh, because of this issue that you have to put the physical artifacts somewhere. So uh, first interview here would be with the CEO. And then you need to choose a location for the second interview, which is with Quality Assurance. Now the way the game is, is written is that there's two different uh, versions. And when you start it up, there's a player one or a player two option. So the idea is that you send people out in pairs. Uh, one person chooses player one, the other chooses player two. And when they get past the second interview, they split up. So if you think about the game tree, teaser, elaboration, then we have this conflict escalation. And the idea is that one player goes in one direction and the other player goes in the other. So you have to choose two different um, locations. And we call these 3A and 3B in the interview files. And the idea is they get different stories. Then they come together for uh, interview four, which is the uh, where the um, shop floor is, where the production facility is. And then finally, they go for uh, another uh, final wrap-up interview. So you have to choose a tree that, that looks a little bit like this, where you've got uh, one step, and they split, then they come back together, and then they come to a final position. And as I say, not too close together, not too far apart. And the locations need to be somewhere where you can put the physical artifacts. So what I've suggested is uh, this little um, game tree. So if you want to have a go at preparing this game, um, you might want to you know, print this out and write on it, or um, do an electronic version, doesn't really matter. Uh, just record the latitude and longitude for each place, and then it's very easy to kind of remember and come back to. Whereas if you just paste them into the XML files, it all gets a bit confusing. Um, so here, hopefully this will be a little bit of a help for you to fill this in. And it also reminds you what those interviews are. Of course, this is the interviews that we've provided. You can change them if you want, and completely change um, who's doing the interviews and what they say and what questions they ask. That's entirely up to you. Once you've done that, you then need to edit the interview files. Now, the, the absolute minimum edit that you need to do is the latitude and the longitude of each of the interviews. So the first interview, interview ID 1, is the CEO, uh, Jeffrey McCorpel who you meet at the management office, and you specify the latitude and the longitude in the XML file. Now, you can leave all, all of the rest of it behind. I mean, you don't have to touch any of this if you don't want to. Uh, the thing you have to remember is that there are two interview files, interviews one and interviews two. I'm going to open this up in TextPad. Hopefully, the recording will keep up with me. Um, This is interviews one, and you can see that it's got interview one, interview two, interview three, interview four, interview, well, we call it 99. This gives us some flexibility to put extra ones in between if we want to. This file is exactly the same as the other one, except for interview three, which is where the two players go to different places. Um, this isn't the best way of organizing the files, having uh, duplicated info. It may be something we should look at. But at the moment, that's the way it works. Um, so you'll notice that uh, in this case, this is the marketing interview um, in interviews one. But if I open up interviews two, uh, you can see that interviews three here is, uh, sorry. Interview three here is um, research, research and development. Otherwise, the two files are identical. Uh, but at the moment, and this is one of the, you know, I say it's a work in progress, you will have to replace the latitude and longitude exactly the same in both files for interviews one, two, four, and five, and choose different latitude and longitude for interview three. Uh, the, the big task for us actually moving forward is to uh, remove all of this hand editing and provide a desktop tool so that you can do all of this very, very easily. Yeah, that's uh, something that we're just uh, starting as a pro project at the moment. But if you want to use the game at the moment, 
those are the things that you need to do. Simply modify the latitude and the longitude in interviews one and interviews two. And you don't need to do anything else at all. And then the game will work where you are. There's a couple of things that you can also configure if you want to. Uh, there's a config.txt file. It's got an initial latitude and longitude. That's where the initial map will center. It's not that important because as soon as your GPS kicks in, it will jump to where you are. But if you want it to open up with a sensible map that shows where you expect to be, you can change that initial latitude and longitude. So that's where you might want the players to start, which is before they get to the first interview. Um, the zoom level is the Google Map zoom, and you can change that if you're unhappy with the initial zoom level that you get on the screen. Um, wouldn't worry about some of these values here, they're just kind of defaults and they're not really sensible to mess with. Um, you can change the scoring of the um, checkboxes at the end, which are choosing the main issues the company's facing. I have to say I think they're a bit arbitrary at the moment, and uh, I think we need to think a bit more carefully about what we expect the students to highlight and why they get different scores. Uh, the other thing that you may well want to configure is this. This buildings entry, you might wonder what this is all about. Uh, one of the augmented reality features that we've got in the game is that as you uh, move around the area, you get little floating labels over the buildings that tell you what they are. Because if you remember the, the sort of concept of the game, is that you're in a location and you're trying to make it stand in for a different location. And so uh, these things pop up on top of the buildings as you walk around, showing you, for example, that you're now at the management office or you're going to the quality assurance department and so on. And you can see again that these have uh, latitude and longitude values. These, of course, would be the same ones as the relevant interview. So if you wanted to set the management office uh, latitude and longitude, that would be the same location as interview one. So you can take these values directly off your game tree entries. It's not They don't have to be different. They, they're the same. If you don't change these, it doesn't stop the game working, but you won't see the augmented reality labels floating over the buildings as you walk around. Uh, that's probably all I need to talk about, actually, um, in terms of configuring the game yourself. Let me just go back to my physique screen. OK, so um, I see there's just uh, in case there was anybody there, which there isn't, so I shall just carry on. I'm, I set this up as a half hour session, so it's a fairly short session. So what I just uh, will wrap up with is, if you want to try and do the configuration more ambitiously, and that is, if, if you like, design your own game and use the structure of this software as a, as a game designer, what can you do? Well, there's a number of things that you can do, in fact. Um, one thing you can do is replace the interviews. So, for example, inter1.mp4. Uh, this is me pretending to be um, Jeffrey McCall. So there's a, an interview there. Now, um, word of warning, if you decide you want to change the interviews, you are going to be changing the whole game. So if you wanted to make the game different and you wanted to change the interviews, that's fine. But they tie up with the artifacts and they tie up with the um, questions. So the artifacts. Uh, he's just talked about the newspaper article, which is this one. It also appears on the, um, the Moby Mook web page as one of the examples. So in the interview, he talks about this newspaper article. This is the physical artifact that you stick up on the wall or in the foyer or somewhere around the location that you send the students to. This is kind of an important part of the game because it, it makes a concrete link between the virtual things going on on the phone and the physical things in the environment. So these physical artifacts are important. And if you change the interviews, of course, you have to change the artifacts. You also need to go into those XML files and change the text as well. So if I open up uh, 
into views one again, you can see that there are questions that the students have to answer with um, answers and suggested scores. And these scores are meant to reflect the appropriateness of the questioning. So part of the critical thinking aspect of the game is you get to ask one question. So you can choose which question to ask. And you get scores depending on which question you ask. So if you change the video, you change the artifact, you have to change the questions, you have to change the answers, you have to change the scores. So um, those are all things that you'd have to consider if you were going to do some serious reworking of the game. And in fact, there's another uh, aspect of the um, config text file, which is this one at the end. There's an open question. At the moment, it says, what are your thoughts about why Kiwi Mobile is facing difficulties? What do you think they could do to address the problems? And of course, if you change the game again, that final open question will need to be recorded. Uh, there's one final word of warning. The game as it stands uh, sends test data up to our server. Um, so bear that in mind. Um, and that's, that's purely, we're using that just for evaluation. All it does is it gathers um, anonymous uh, usage data. And um, one of the things it picks up is what people type into that box. So um, as a sort of uh, information transparency um, admission, I suppose, not quite sure how to phrase it. Uh, the current game is writing stuff to a test server. So if you just use it out of the box, uh, you will be sending anonymous data to our uh, server, which is set up purely to record game activity for research purposes. Um, so if you don't like that possibility, uh, don't use it at the moment. Uh, wait till I've got the source code up there on SourceForge, and you can change that and point to your server or disable that functionality or whatever. OK, I think I've stopped sharing my screen. After last experience, I've got no idea uh, what anybody might have seen <laughs> or how uh, well related what I was saying was to what you were seeing. But hopefully that was of some value to you. I hope some of you uh, will look at this recording and have a look at the software and maybe have a go at uh, trying out the game, configuring your own game. And if you have any thoughts about the design or anything, uh, please let me know. OK, we're almost at the end now of my half an hour. So I'd just like to say uh, thanks to anybody who watches the recording. And uh, if you want to contact me about the game in any way, please do so.